Welcome to this clinical case discussion in ophthalmology. Today we are going to do a case of glaucoma. We will do a slit lamp examination and some basics of glaucomatous cupping. Before we start off, I think we need to differentiate what is pallor and cupping. Cupping is the bending of small vessels crossing the disc. Here you can see this is the area where they are actually bending compared to what is pallor which is maximal area of color contrast. So this is the area. So obviously this cupping is greater than the pallor in this patient. You need to identify. So cupping is measured from where the vessels are bending rather than the area of pallor. That's very important understanding of glaucoma. So we are going to see a patient. Uh, she presented to me, she's 62 year old female, uh, she's a hypermetro with plus 1.75 diopters of severe both sides, vision improving to 6.9 with addition of plus 2.5. The interior segment examination shows a nucleus sclerosis of NS2 plus and posterior subcapsular 2 plus on both sides and on OCT. Uh, the retinal nerve fiber thickness was green in all quadrants, while the cup to disc ratio clinically seemed to be about 0.6. Intraocular pressure was measured as 16 millimeters of mercury on both sides. So she was non diabetic, non hypertensive, and no ischemic heart disease. So this is a slit lamp examination. We are probably going to be more focusing on looking at the cup to disc ratio. So we immediately change over to uh, superfield lens and start looking at the disc. So if it's not a very dilated pupil, sometimes it's uneasy or difficult to capture the disc. But this is just to show you how, what things you should look for or how should you maneuver yourself towards the disc in these patients. So once you've got it identified, the disc, so you can uh, keep it at low magnification. And once you have it magnified, uh, in place, then you can magnify the area and look at the disc. So what do you want to look at the disc in 90 diopter lens? It's going to be an inverted disc. So here you can see sometime you're playing around, you're actually seeing reflection and the disc is not visible, but you keep moving the lens around and it will become visible. Here you can see the disc is visible. I increase the magnification, then I focus it and you see a cup to disc ratio of 0.6 is seen clinically on both sides and some of the fovea is seen on that side. So what you see is on a slit lamp examination with a 90 diopter lens, you don't get a broad wide field view of the optic disc. So you're getting a snapshot over that area. But what you need to do is see if there's a large, if this is a typically a large disc or a small disc. This uh, you can see the interior segment examination. You wanted to see the, the density of the cataract and the and the chamber angle on, on this side to evaluate the glaucoma. This is cupping on the other side. So whenever you see this is if the cup is on towards your uh, on towards your right side, it is the patient's left uh, left eye which you are evaluating and the disc is going to be seen upside down. Here you see the disc is upside down. So once you've seen the optic disc, what you need to do is you can look at the uh, nucleus sclerosis and the angle. And the main important thing is checking the intraocular pressure with a Goldman uh, applanation tonometer. I'm going to do the tonometry without using a fluorescein dye for which you need to add two millimeters of mercury on this thing. Here you can see your Myers are slightly under, so you so you are going to rotate the dial on the on the scale to increase the pressure. So here you can see the Myers are just setting inside or they're slightly more than the inside. So the typically it should be inside to inside on a Goldman tonometer when you're doing with the fluorescein. So once you've measured the intraocular pressure, was, which was 16 in both eyes, this is the OCT scan of this patient, which was done in 2018. Here you can see the, the this is the RNFL thickness. This is called the TSNIT map. And here you can see one is one is blue and one is black. One is the right eye and one is the left eye. And uh, here you actually see all of them are going in the green zone. The other thing which is important, the thickness map on the retinal nerve fiber. It is important to note that this 200 micron does not, this red area does not show that the area is 
thin, but it is actually showing that this is the area of the thickest area of retinal nerve fiber, which is normally present in the superior and inferior co uh, quadrants because of the arching of the papillomacular, because the papillomacular bundles are there, so you've got the arching of the temporal fibers coming on that side. So this is to evaluate, this is the super pixel map, and then you go on to the detail quadrant map one is the quadrant map and the other is the clock hour map which you see on the OCT scan so this is the average thickness shows that it is 99 uh, micron on the right and 87 on the left side but with age match control it is still within normal limits so this is the clock hour map going in 12 clock hours and this is the quadrant map then you look at the optic disc topography you want to see the disc area and the rim area but the most important thing which you want to see is the linear cup to disc ratio especially the vertical cup to disc ratio because that is the most affected in glaucoma so clinically we thought it was 0.6 but here is coming as 0 0.76 0 0.077 so another thing which you want to see is how does the OCT mach machine measure the optic disc edge it is actually measuring the Brooks membrane opening or the BMO that is how it measures because that is a reliable parameter especially in patients with peripapillary atrophy as well. So this was the patient's uh, finding a few years ago and now if you have a patient which initially because the pressures were raised at the first visit but the OCT scans were normal so it was labeled as a patient of ocular hypertension and we started her on because the pressures were significantly high and they needed control so gave her Travoprost once a day then there is a combination of Glantrim is a combination of Timoptol and or Timolol plus Dorzolamide and Alphagan is a combination is just a simple Brimonity and eye drops and along with that we were giving her tear natural drops This was initially what we what she was using was Glantrim and Alphagan twice a day Which is the usual dose with that her pressure was 16 millimeters of mercury But then we decided to do a repeat OCT scan and the treatment after the seeing the results was Change and we increased the Glantrim and Alphagan to three times a day, which I find that it tends to improve the uh, ocular pressure control the other thing which you want to see in the OCT is the progressive thinning of the retinal nerve fiber here you can see this is the same thing the TSNIT here you can see it's now touching the red zone in both eyes so and if you see the detail map now the retinal nerve fiber thickness average has gone down to 96 and the other has gone to 80 and the quadrantic map especially on the left eye showed a red area that shows significant reduction in nerve fiber layer and the clock hours you can also see damage in the borderline or the yellow zone and the vertical cup to disc ratio has slightly increased on this side to 0 0.8 to 0 0.84 so whenever you see a patient whose cup to disc ratio is changing that means that the, re the, the glaucoma damage is increasing what you need to do is to bring the pressure target pressure down it was if it was 16 you try to bring it down to 12 because the ages study has shown that if you keep the pressure at 12 that is the pressure at which you will get minimum loss of retinal nerve fiber layer and if you cannot bring it further down with eye drops then you need to change either supplement with a selective argon laser trabeculoplasty or consider trabeculectomy so that concludes our case for glaucoma there are a lot of things which can be discussed but this is uh, just a short review of what you would decide and how would you manage your patient when you're seeing them in the outpatients thank you very much for watching and we look forward to seeing you back. Uh